If you've been playing congas for a while, or djembe, or any kind of full-size hand drum that you often rest on the floor, in addition to holding or putting on a stand, uh, you know that the surface on which you place your drum can have a big impact on the sound. And in general, we want to put our drums on hardwood, uh, maybe tile or you know some kind of a, a hard flooring surface, as opposed to carpet, which tends to just suck all the life out of the sound of a drum. And if you're not familiar with the differences, keep watching this video because you're going to get your mind blown in a minute. I actually discovered something new and exciting and I'm an old guy, I've been around a long time. I've played my drum on all kinds of different stages, different surfaces, um, but I wanna share something with you that I think is gonna be really helpful and revolutionary to a degree. <laughs> so if you're a conga player or you play djembe or you play a shiko, any kind of full-size drum, uh, this video will help you find some ways that you can get the best sound out of that instrument. So I'm gonna be comparing the sound of a standard conga drum on four different surfaces plus flat and tipped. So that's eight different sounds. We're gonna be looking at a couple of them more carefully because I wanna give you some tips on how to get the best sound. But right now, let's just review the four different surfaces. So I'll be playing this drum on the floor in my studio, which is a laminate hardwood uh, flooring, right? A faux hardwood laminate flooring. So this would be similar to just any hardwood. I will be playing the drum on a piece of indoor-outdoor style carpeting. This is uh, actually the piece of carpet I use as a doormat for my studio. And this would be similar to an indoor-outdoor. It's it's basically like a really short carpet with some ridges in it. So it's kind of a doormat, but it, this would be applicable to something you might find on a uh, stage risers that have that indoor-outdoor or maybe a multi-purpose room, something like that. So we're gonna test it on this. I'll be using this um, indoor-outdoor faux brick piece. I was at the Home Depot the other day and the reason I got this idea for doing this video is I saw these and it reminded me of those pieces of wood that you can buy to put your congas on that has some slots in it. So we're gonna check this one. And then finally, I'll be testing this, which is actually not a, a style of flooring like the last piece, but this is more of a hard rubber. I'm kind of excited about this, because again, it, it reminded me of those pieces of wood that you can buy to put your congas on, but it's also rubbery and it doesn't cost that much. So we're gonna see if we can save you guys some money and get the best sound possible. So let's get on with our sound tests. First up, conga drum flat on the wood floor. Now here's the conga tipped, like you would if you were playing it straight in front of you, tipped on the wood floor. Now we're gonna do carpeting flat. And now tipped. Now we're gonna test the faux brick, kind of rubberized, sort of like playground, play area material, uh, flat. And now tipped. Now we're gonna check the faux wood slice flat.
and now tipped. So clearly these two are not going to be our first choice. Carpet? No. We don't like carpet, although it did sound a lot better when it was tipped. This stuff, I was surprised to find out that even though it has these channels, it really kind of killed the sound, especially when it was uh, flat. But even when it was tipped, it was a lot like carpet. And what I realized with this is this stuff is not strong. <laughs> In fact, look at this. It's meant, it's really meant to be installed and uh, the makers of this material are like, no, don't, don't rip it up. It's just very spongy. Look at this. I, in fact, it's cr literally crumbling. Sorry, drum. Uh, it's literally crumbling in my hand. So I, I don't recommend this mainly because even if it sounded good, uh, you're not going to be able to work with it. You can't put it in a, in a uh, case and take it somewhere and set it up. I mean, it'll, they'll be destroyed. So um, let's look at the two winners in this scenario, and I'm going to talk about what you can do to make your sound the best it can be. So now let's do a quick A-B of the two winners in this group, which are the wood floor, which this is on right now, and this uh, kind of you know hard rubber uh, faux log slice, I guess that um, actually surprisingly, um, it sounded really good. And it has a lot of channels for the air to move in and out of the bottom of the drum. It also is a lot harder and more durable and it's, I can feel like it's not gonna, it's not chipping. So this is a different material than that other stuff. This is more like a hard rubber. I think it's very durable. So I'm gonna check them right now and just AB these. So I'll put this on the floor. This is the drum flat on the hardwood. And on the faux wood. Pretty close. This is the conga on the floor, tipped to the side a little. And here it is on the faux wood. So I don't know if you can hear that, but what I'm hearing um, is this actually sounds better. The faux wood piece, that kind of hard rubber uh, faux wood, actually sounds, to me, a little more resonant. And that's exciting because what that tells me is that I could get a couple or three of these, however many drums I'm bringing on the gig, and I could slide these into my case or bag or just throw them in the, in the car. And if I need them, so if I get to a gig and there's carpet, indoor outdoor carpet, which is conga death uh, or djembe tone death, um, I can use these. And even if there is a wood floor or a tile floor, I still might want to use these. Why? Well, there's a couple reasons. One, I think they sound better. Two, it's a little bit rubbery. And, you know, if you're playing your drums, even if you're playing them flat and you can't play more than Usually you can't play more than uh, one drum tipped because if you're putting your drums flat on the floor, you know, you can only tip one at a time unless you're really skilled. Uh, <laughs> but usually we would have in a set of two, we'd be tipping one and the other one's flat. So you could use one for the flat drum and then tip the other drum or just use two of these. Uh, another benefit is if you're using, let's say four drums, you can use this to raise one of them up. Let's say you're reaching over and you want the drum in front of you to be a little higher. That's another reason. But another thing is even for something like recording, I think this is going to um, help make the drum quieter. And those of you who play congas, you know, if you get on a floor and either the floor isn't entirely flat or your, the bottom of your drum is not entirely flat and straight, you can end up with a drum that is wobbling and when you're playing, it can be making sound. And for a live gig, that's not really that big a deal if you're playing in a band. But if you're in the studio, that can make a big difference because you don't want extra noise. Um, also, it just makes the drum, I think, more stable because it's a little bit cushioned, but not enough to kill the sound. So I really like that. I'm going to call this a winner. 
Um, you can get these at your favorite home improvement store, hardware store. They're not that expensive. I have a picture here actually of the price that I paid. I'll show you guys that. I would stay away from the materials that might look similar, like those faux brick things. They're just not made for this kind of application. But this thing uh, could save you some money over some of the wood conga, you know, conga or djembe wooden um, pieces that are made for, you know, musical instruments. Uh, and it's durable. I don't see any problems with it. And if you decide later you don't want to use it, you can use it for your potted plant. Okay, I'd really love to know if you guys have any other uh, information you want to share to help our World Drum Club community. Uh, I hope this is helpful. As always, thanks for being a supporter of World Drum Club, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.